Assalamu alaikum, hello, and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative with me, your host, Rizwan Karim. Today, I'm extremely excited for the episode that we have lined up for you. Um, we're going to talk about writing and, and the process of writing, the process of authoring a book. Um, in recent times and, and in, in the modern world, the expression of opinion has been largely dominated by maybe 140 characters at a time, maybe a few sentences or paragraphs as a status update, could be some photos that we'd post online, or even 10 to 15 second videos. But the actual process of writing a book, the efforts that go into it, is a huge challenge. And because of that, I'm very excited and, and happy to have with us here today somebody who has authored a book. Uh, you, must have, you might have heard of it. It's Asia the Book. And this is a book that has been written towards addressing the challenges that are faced by Muslim women in today's modern world, trying to, um, trying to uh, mix together the, the worlds of fashion and makeup and uh, trying to observe our Islamic principles as well. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to today's guest. And this is Sister Zainab Karim, who's here with us today. Uh, thank you so much for being with us and taking the time to be on the show today. Thank you for having me. So let's, let's get started right off the bat. Um, obviously, the book has done extremely well. You know, how, how have you thought of the, the response you've received? I've been really happy with um, how people have received the book. I've had a lot of people telling me that they find the book very uh, relatable. Um, Asya, as the main character, is very relatable to the people in our community and Muslims in general. Um, so I think it's a, it's a refreshing change from Hollywood and Bollywood movies yeah, and books. Absolutely. So, so what I want to do is today, we'll talk about two things. So yeah. one is I want to focus on you as an author. Mm -hmm. So Zainab the, Zainab the author. Yeah. And then, I want to, and then we'll move into Asya the book. Mm -hmm. so, so let's get started with that. So Asya the book, what, what brought on the, the idea of writing a book? Well, it, it wasn't as much as an idea as it was a goal. Um, writing a book has been a lifelong goal for me for as long as I can remember. Um, ever since I was in high school, this is the one thing that I've been wanting to do. Um, with regards to the actual method of writing, I think um, I'm not a very confrontational person. So I think rather than speaking to people and addressing these issues face to face, right. I think I prefer putting it down in writing. Um, and that's how the idea of writing the book. Okay, so I'm sure that there's people who are watching today mm -hmm. who might have aspirations of writing a book or authoring their own book. Uh, tell us a little bit about the process that goes into it. I mean, from the, the conception of the idea to you know, funding or writing and printing. Uh, tell us a little bit about that process. What, what goes into it from start to, to the finish line? So there's two main options that you can take. Either you can self-publish a book or you can go the official way which is to submit your manuscript to a publishing house or publisher. Um, I chose to self-publish, and so I started it with a Kickstarter campaign. And a lot of people don't know this, but I actually didn't have the book ready oh, wow. while doing the Kickstarter campaign. Okay. And the reason for this is because I wanted to test out the market and see if there were people interested in the book. Um, so I started with the crowdfunding campaign. I set a fundraising goal for myself. Um, I had incentives for people to pledge to the campaign. And basically, that was my, my way of A, getting the word out, and B, seeing whether people were interested in purchasing this kind of book. Mm -hmm. um, the campaign ran for about a month, a month and a half. And when, alhamdulillah, I managed to reach my target. And so once I realized that there is an interest for the book, I started now like <laughs> getting yeah. together and uh, finalizing the, the manuscript. Um, and so once I had pretty much the final draft ready, I had beta readers look them over, so friends and family. Um, and once they you know, gave me their feedback, handed in their comments, I improved it and then looked at the first editor, got feedback from her, and then hired a second editor. So I actually went through the editing process oh, twice. Okay. Um, and then put together the final manuscript, looked for a cover design, uh, got the cover designer, looked for a printer, got the printer. Um, and that's it really. It's because with self-publishing, you do everything by yourself. So you go by your own pace, you decide mm -hmm. what to do and what not to do, and just take it. From and how there. long did that take you? So from the conception um, of the idea to until you actually wrote it. For you, how long? Did I would that take? say about two years, a year and a half to two years. 
Okay. Yeah. So then the next question is this. When you've given yourself that much time, yeah. so if you say that, okay, I've, I've got a year, maybe two years to write this book, yeah. how do you actually get up in the morning and motivate yourself to write? I mean, and, and this is not just for those who want to write a book. I mean, a lot of people out there have projects to work on yeah. or things that yeah. they want to do and just can't seem to motivate themselves to actually get to it. So writing would be even a bigger challenge yeah. to get up and see an empty uh, page or screen on your computer and yeah. just start writing. How did you how did you do that every day? I actually had the worst work ethic you can imagine. Like <laughs> I would spend hours procrastinating, um, you know, videos on YouTube, yada, yada, all that. Um, so I was really terrible at um, maintaining a work ethic. But I think what really helped me is the crowdfunding campaign also worked as an accountability kind of thing. So ah, I had a good balance of like the desire to do it and the pressure to do it. Right. Um, once you get that balance right, you find a way to wake up <laughs> in the morning and get it down. That's good to know. That's um, good information. Yeah. So that's another purpose that the crowdfunding campaign served. I was like, look, there's people who've you know paid for this book. There are people waiting for the book. Everybody knows you're going to do it. So do it. <laughs> so, so do you think there's another book coming? Or is this your I think so. I shot? actually posted um, on Instagram a few weeks ago um, some scribbles that I was writing as my inspiration for the next book. And I got a good response. Like I had people messaging me and telling me, yes, please, like get, you know, get the So that's good. Out. So that'll serve as, 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 as an inspiration towards your next book or yeah. project. <laughs> yeah. So I think there okay. should be an Asia part two. <laughs> good, good. So, so now let's, let's go towards Asia the book. Mm -hmm. And this is obviously for those people who may not have, have read the book mm -hmm. and, and probably want to get it. Yeah. Um, is there a particular audience that you're, you're targeting? Is there a demographic that you're looking at or is it more general, um, something that could apply to everyone? The cool and really surprising thing that I have uh, realized ever since the book launch is that people of very many different cultures are reading it from very many different countries. Um, both genders, male and female, as well as all ages. You know, I've had mother, mothers-in-law, mother-in-laws, oops. I've had mothers-in-law buying this book for their daughters, and I've oh, had good. daughters buying the book for their mothers-in-law. So it's, it, it goes across a wide variety of ages. Have, you, have um, you had fathers buying the book for their daughter? I have had, in fact, I had um, a grandfather <laughs> oh, nice. who bought okay. books for their grandchildren. Um, so I think it's it's very flexible the target audience can range excellent yeah so now when i read the book yeah uh, there was one paragraph that really uh stood out to me uh -oh. and i think i, I think <laughs> this will will uh will create a will create a stir uh or for, for the audience today so i'm going to go ahead and read out this paragraph that really stood out to me and hopefully you'll be able to shed some light on what you were sure. intending to with uh with that so so here we go Every Muslim sect has some variation in their practice of the Islamic dress code and the long black abaya is the standard. Over time, however, fashion-forward Muslims had it such that even the simple and modest black gown was not spared from a fashionable makeover. And so the abaya, while still physically covering a woman's body quite effectively, has lost some of its loyalty to the true essence of modesty. Fitted elastic waist belts, sparkling beaded necklines, and shimmery fabrics are just a few of the modern twists introduced to the once simple abaya. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about that. That's a pretty bold, uh, a pretty bold statement. Yeah, I think, I think this is the kind of stuff that we always observe in our day-to-day -day life, but no one ever talks about it. So mm. even though it might seem like, yes, it does ruffle some feathers, um, I believe that more people than would be apparent would be agreeing with this. Um, and so basically, the intent when I was writing this is to sort of show that how the abaya originates, what was the reason behind it? The reason is that it's a long, simple gown. It, the purpose is to be modest, to not draw attention to yourself. But what's happened with the rise of like the fashion industry and hijabi fashion right. is that even the simple black abaya has been modified and has been made more fashionable for people who are, you know, fashionable, fashion forward people. Um, so we have very like outlandish kind of abayas, very colorful, very attention drawing, Absolutely. whereas the purpose is to, to deflect attention from yourself. And so basically that paragraph 
just takes us through the journey of how it started off as a simple black gown and now it's more of like a fashion statement and you have like models that are modeling different styles of abayas, different styles of abayas, um, you know, coming into fashion, going out of fashion and it, there's always something new to look forward to. It's pearls and sparkles and glitters and like, <laughs> you know, all that stuff that's really um, contrary to what the purpose of hijab so, is. So would it be correct to then assume that that the, the purpose of hijab for what it has always been meant for, we seem to be moving away from, from that, that ideology, 100%, I suppose. 100%, yes. Okay, interesting. So what I want is, I want you, the audience, you know, did that ruffle your feathers? Uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if it did, do you, do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Um, I, I'd love to hear from you. If you uh, please share your comments in the comment section below. Uh, tell us what you think. What is your definition of hijab? Uh, do you think we're headed in, 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 a, in the wrong direction? Or do you feel that what the, the modernization of, of hijab is something perfectly okay? Uh, do you agree with it or do you not? So please share your, your, your thoughts with us in, in, the, in, the, in the comment section. So, uh, Zainab, let's move along here. Now, I'm sure there's people, as, as mentioned earlier, there might be somebody out there who wants to write their own book. Mm -hmm. What is that one piece of advice that you would have for them? Or two, you know, what advice do you have for an up-and-coming writer, uh, somebody who, who wants to get into or author their own book? So I think doing something on your own, as I started out, um, it can be very, you have a lot of free time and you don't have that pressure. So you find yourself, the work ethic slips a lot. So for mm -hmm. me, how I tackled that is I had the crowdfunding campaign. Right. And so that kept me accountable to the people who had already paid for the book. So my biggest, I think, um, tip would be that please have, make a, find a way to make it public. Find a way to talk to people about it. Make sure people know what you're up to so that it acts as like, um, not just like a secret goal that, oh, one day you're going to achieve, but mm. it's like, oh, people know about this. People are excited about it. Right. I need to get it done. So definitely find a way to hold yourself accountable for what you want to achieve. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I do hope that uh, when a lot of people hear uh, hear your story, it would inspire them and motivate them to hopefully one day write their own book. Now, I know that you have a special promotion for everyone uh, uh, watching today. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit more, a little bit more about that promotion that you have for our viewers today. So if you visit our website, which is asiathebook.com, um, the first five people to place their orders within the next couple of weeks, if you use the code FREEBOOK, you can get your book for free. So Zainab, thank you so much for, for that, uh, that special promotion for our viewers. Um, so my question to you is this, um, you know, if, you, if there's anything that you would like to, to hear from Zainab, if you would like to reach out to her, um, you know, the, the information is gonna be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, last question to you, Zainab, is do you have any, any future projects coming up? Not necessarily writing-related or book-related, but mm -hmm. is there something that uh, you'll be working on um, in, in line with what you've already started? To be honest with you, I do think it should be um, writing-related because I've had so many people come up to me and say that, oh, I've been working on this book and I really want to do it, but I just can't finish it or I can't you know, uh, find the motivation to finish it. Uh, so I think one thing that I probably will get into down the line is maybe editing. Ah, um, okay. So editing for people, mentoring, because I found my mentor very, very useful. Um, she was there, you know, in the dark of the night, early in the morning, whenever I needed her, I would just write to her and ask her like, hey, I'm stuck here. Like, how do I go on? Right. Um, so I think I would want to be that person for somebody else who's struggling through their own book. Um, so in the future, inshallah... Editor. Okay, well, so there you have it. So if you're ever looking for an editor or if, you're, if you have a writing project that you're working on and need some guidance, I'm sure Zena will be more than yes, happy, of course. happy to, to assist. And so, uh, so to follow up on her special promotion, uh, as you heard last week, I have my own giveaway uh, on the show. And uh, uh, we have the two uh, Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge passes uh, that I'm also going to be giving away today uh, on, on, on this show. So I have two more passes uh, to give away. Uh, you know the conditions to, to qualify for them. Uh, please make sure that if you enjoyed what you, what you saw today, uh, please give us a thumbs up uh, on this video. And please make sure that you comment and share your, 
uh, feedback as well. And most importantly, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. So please make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts and you could be uh, a winner of the two uh, Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge uh, passes. So, so as, we, as we conclude today's, today's episode, do you yeah. have any final, uh, final message for, for, for the viewers uh, watching? Well, obviously, I would love to thank everybody who has shown me their support um, in the past few months since the launch. And uh, I just, I really appreciate all the good feedback that I've received so far. Um, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, please, you know, you can message me on Instagram, Asya the Book, um, or just email me, info at asyathebook.com. So to conclude, um, I look forward to hearing from you and uh, please do reach out to us and we can't wait to hear from you and I hope that you will continue to tune in every Friday um, for more episodes. We've got some extremely good uh, content coming your way and I look forward to, uh, to having you tune in again every Friday with us. Thank you very much.